Okay, this video we're going to look at finding the inverse of a set of ordered pairs. Okay, so in, in this problem we have, I've got two examples. Okay, we want to determine if the relation has an inverse and if it does state the inverse of the relation. Alright, so notice here it says determine if the relation has an inverse. Alright, well in order for a function, a relation, to have an inverse, it has to be one-to-one. -one. If it's not one-to-one, -one, then that means it does not have an inverse. All right. So how do we determine if a relation is one-to-one? -one? Well, you cannot have the same y value with two different x values. Okay? If you have the same y coordinate with two different x coordinates, then that means the relation is not one to one, and so that means it does not have an inverse. So let's look at the first one. Here we look at all the y values, and you can see we do not have the same y value anywhere. So we're not going to have the same y value with two different x values. So that means f for number one, f is one to one, so that means it has an inverse. So the inverse is equal to, now how do we find the inverse? Well, we just swap the x and y coordinates. So that would be 2, 1, 4, 3, and 6, 5. And so there's your inverse. Okay. All right, so keep watching the video because at the end, after I work the problems, I'm going to show you something about the domain and range Okay, that can be helpful. All right, so let's look at number 2. All right, so here we have f is this set of ordered pairs. Okay, so I go through here and I look. So do I have the same y value anywhere with two different x values? All right, computer kind of messed up there. All right, so to find the inverse, do I have the same y value with two different x values? Well, if you look at this, you see this 4 and this 4, that's the same y value with two different x values. Okay, So that means that f is not 1 to 1. Okay, So there is no inverse. Okay. Alright, now let's talk about this. Let's talk about f and f inverse for a second. We've got, uh, we got a lot of time. Uh, we've only, we're only about around four minutes. Alright, so I'm going to erase this so I can write some stuff down. Alright, so if we look at the function f, okay, alright, what is the domain of f. Well, the domain is the x coordinates. So that's 1, 3, and 5. And the range is the y coordinates 2, 4, and 6. 2, 4, and 6. All right. So now let's look at f inverse. Okay. So the domain of f inverse is the x coordinates 2, 4, 6, and the range is the y coordinates 1, 3, and 5. Okay. Now, the thing that you notice, and I, you know, like I said, you probably already know this, but I just want to mention it again for those that may not. Okay. Notice the domain of the function 
see the domain of F is the range of the inverse and the range of the function is the domain of the inverse okay so you know that can be that, that's important going you know when you start finding inverses of functions and stuff uh, I have a video on finding the inverse of functions you can check that out that's on my on my YouTube channel uh, the find the inverse of functions where on one of the problems we actually we actually have to use this concept here and uh, then I have the inverse of logarithmic functions inverse of uh, uh, exponential functions and how to determine if you're given two functions how to you have to check and see are these two functions inverses of each other so I've got those so you can check that up out on my channel and you know that that just about covers everything with inverses uh, so thanks for watching give me a like share subscribe and see you later